My name is Thomas Boskett. I'm going to be introducing you to some of the works of Ideo Pantaleoni. But don't forget, you're only going to get to see a couple works here today while we're talking. We're going to go in depth on them, as in depth as you want to go, as in depth as I want to go, but I really want to hear from you. So I need you to call in as much as possible, 855-983-5483. Again, 855-983-5483. Give us a ring, tell us what you think about the works, and I want to encourage you to really call in and tell us what you feel no matter what it is, whatever you're thinking. Art is basically an experience and a record of an experience, so the works that you're going to look at, again, that are by Adeo Pantaleoni today, are going to be more important to both of us if we actually talk about them and have a conversation, so I encourage you to call in. And if you want to see the full collection, it's on livearttv.com. Give us a ring, drop it on our site and let us know what you think. So let's start out right here with number one. This work by the artist, Adeo Pantaleoni, was done in 1983. The work is um, from a period when he was working what we call concrete art, and that means geometrical abstraction. I'm going to take you through the painting in a second, but let's just do a little bit of history on Adeo Pantaleoni. He was born in 1904, and he studied in many different schools uh, in Ferrara, Italy, uh, he studied in Bologna, and eventually he moved to Milan. By the time he got to Milan, he was at the center of the art world. This is where everything was happening, and it was super exciting for him. And you have to imagine, I said 1923, so he's 19 years old. That's incredible that he already has a history of studying in three different schools of art, and he's only 19 years old. I think about in the States, we basically start school, maybe studying art after high school, you, you get, you know, you might be one year in. He was already probably 12 years in or more into studying his work. And so he comes around to discover different movements, uh, concrete art. Uh, there was one organization which he actually was a founder of, which is Movimento Arte Concreta, MAC, M-A-C. You can look that up online. What's interesting to me is that Although he just explored many different periods and places in art, and you'll see those, he was one of the forerunners of what was happening in art in the Italian world, but also worldwide. And you'll see as we go through the shows today, uh, we may be breaking into different pieces of his history. One of the parts was that he was always interested in the experience of a human being connecting to their world. And I think that we all do this naturally, that's how we live our lives, but sometimes we forget and we sort of back off and kind of just get by. And here he was really using the artwork to record his experiences of living. And as you can say, I've recorded some experiences with my <laughs> broken arm. If you've had any experiences with breaking bones, let me know, because I'd like to hear what you're experiencing along with what he was experiencing and we experience as people. Uh, this piece, number one, if you call in to reference it, was basically one of the concrete pieces that he developed um, late in life. This is actually in the 80s, and you're going to see as we go through the history that he did this, um, this, this kind of journey of concrete art, uh, looking at how we translate the physical world into something of an image of that world. And you can see that obviously it's abstract, but that doesn't, it's also realistic to me in that you can kind of see like a natural landscape. These are trees up here. He has the sun shining through in here. And then he has this concrete kind of grounding through here. And I think, what is that when you feel that in your body, that ability to feel stable or, or um, safe, and then you think how it explodes up into the light and becomes something exciting, uh, potentially even hopeful, I think, when you get up into the pinks and the, and the blues up here. And if, <clears throat> if you look at this work and <clears throat> you start thinking about, excuse me, if you start thinking about why did he do this? Why does somebody need to record this kind of experience? I think it's clear that it changes us. It, it, it helps us know where we are in the world and how alive we are by having these experiences that are kept and re we can respond to over and over and over. You can actually see the inside of someone's world on the outside. And if you come up, let's just zoom up here for a minute and look at number two for a second. And I want to see this piece significantly different in some ways, but I want to talk about also how they're very similar. He's, he's clearly spraying the paint on here, and he's doing something you may not be able to see online, but he's incised the painting. He's actually cut it open. And this painting, you can see the size because of where I'm standing, but I'll give you some specifics on it. Uh, if it's a bear with my broken 
broken arm. But this painting is 50 by 70 mill, uh, centimeters, sorry. And it's a little strange, the inches, because they were Parisian stretchers. He was actually working off of a European uh, format. So this work is 19 and a half inches by 27.5 inches. The work is $6,600. And we were thinking about where would you put this in your home? What would be an appropriate place for this painting? And to me, it had to do with, and some of us here as well, it had to do with more of an intimate feeling, something like a women's dressing room or a den maybe, someplace where you're more enclosed and protected. And why do I say that about this work? Look at this work. It kind of brings in the waist like this like coming in on a person, and you think it's a, it's a private place. It's some place of the center of the body, and the square that he's carved into it solidifies that place, sort of holds it in a location so that you can, you can it's almost like a meditation on this empty space here that's so full of the red. Or the, it's like the nothingness full of everythingness, and you'll see it when you see it live, um, that this piece is significantly uh, quiet kind of through here compared to what you see up here and down here. Down here, there's a bit of a, a, an excitement and, a, and, a, and a, uh, what would I call this? This is like a, I can feel my feet, you know, I can feel the ground beneath me and it's the place from which my life begins. Now, as that life begins, you go through this quiet place and then you enter into a sunshine and an explosion. And he does this strange thing, which you're going to see throughout his career, these accentuated moments. Um, they, they center us. I think that there's something that calls us to come back to ourselves a little bit more, uh, not grounded, but focused and centered. And you can feel that here, right here in the sun, that he sprayed onto the painting very dramatically. Uh, if I come back down, you see that that same sun is in this painting, but it's dispersed throughout the painting. Now, this brings up an interesting point. Between these two works, he's just starting to discover something called the informal, informale in Italian. Uh, what strikes me about this, the informal paint movement was in contrast to things that were more what we call, believe it or not, abstract and plastic. The plastic was when you might paint a person's face and indicate every stroke of paint and every detail, and you sort of lose yourself in what the strokes really mean. The strokes are depicting a nose or a cheek or an eye or a lover's you know, smile, but they're not... Uh, they're not what they are. They're not the paint strokes. They are alluding or allusions to these experiences of physical reality. With his work, he was very, very interested in getting a sense of the concrete experience. As I said in the beginning, he was looking at this uh, art movement, the Movimento Arte Concreta, the MAC movement. He was one of the founders again. So this was super important to him. And this is going to explode into a whole different thing beyond artifacts or like painting drawings and sculptures I'll get to later. But right now, think about this, this concrete art. What does that mean? It means that the brush marks, what we're looking at in his work, every stroke, every shape was a significant experience. It was a moment that you pause and you stop. And if you think about life for a minute, most of our lives are a, kind of a river of events. You have so many things happening, and there are only a few things within those moments that are punctuated that you remember, that you hold inside. And what he's done is created records, artifacts, art, that has those moments locked into it. So when I zoom through here, I start to actually experience what he was experiencing. And I want you to consider what do you connect with here? When do you remember a moment like this in your life where it wasn't only a natural place, but what was going on in that place? What were you excited about potentially? What were some of the most um, momentous moments in your life? Moments where something, where the sun was rising, where even if it's metaphorically and not literally, but it could be literally, where you felt the sun rising in your heart and coming up through you. And these two paintings have that in two very different forms. Sometimes the sun is, is kind of in the distance exploding. Sometimes the sun is dead center, rising above your head and leading you forward. So think about this as you go along. What was he doing there? We're going to move on a little bit over here to a different time in his life. This is 1966. We have this work here. This work is called Outside the Lines. It is 60 centimeters, sorry, 92 centimeters by 60 centimeters. It is 23 and a half inches by 36 and just about a quarter inches tall. This piece is oil on canvas. It is $8,200. 
I want you to consider giving me a call in a moment because we're going to get into this a bit and I want to hear from you. Our number again is 855-983-5483. You can find us on livearttv.com and you are tuned in streaming live at Live Art TV. I am Thomas Boskett, your host. Feel free to call me. You can call me Tom or Thomas. Don't call in as Tommy and give me your, your suggestions unless you know a Tommy that you love and are dear, and then you can call me whatever you want. Uh, you'll find us streaming live on Roku, Android, Amazon Fire Stick, YouTube, and Apple. So again, you can find the whole collection at livearttv.com. Right today, we're going to be looking at just a few of these pieces, maybe 10. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, this piece, again, <clears throat> outside the lines, <clears throat> was done in 1966. <clears throat> now, this is a period when his work was very abstract but, and far less referential to nature. The earlier pieces we were looking at, you could see the sun and the movement. So you start to think, how do I, how do I engage in a piece like this that's so quiet, so meditative and calm? And I think, to me, it's almost a place of, of mental reverie or memory. Uh, Excuse me. Yes, we have, a, we have a guest. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane. I'm the appraiser. Uh, Tom. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, candied orange slices. I forgot to give you that. Oh, beautiful. Because and those are candied orange slices. slices. So let's look at this piece. This piece is from 1983, Oil on Canvas. And again, it's $8,600. And you have a sense of the scale and the size and whatnot. But where all of a sudden, if we think about candied orange slices, we didn't go there in the beginning, right? We were talking about nature and all these things. You think, how does this have to do with candied orange slices? The first memory I have of candied orange slices was a hurricane was happening in Kentucky. It was crazy. And I was safe inside. And I found a package of candied orange slices. And it made me feel like everything was going to be OK. And it ultimately was. We were safe. But it was a real turn on to have those slices and be excited about something safe and inside me candy. So again, I encourage you, talk to me about your associations here. It's 855-983. 5483. I want to hear what you're thinking. I'm going to keep moving on. If we go back to that, it's because of you, so give us a ring. If you get lost, just go to livearttv.com and our numbers are all there and you can find us, okay? So let's take a look at this piece. Uh, again, it's outside the lines and you have to excuse me. I have a broken arm, so for two more weeks while you're tuning in to us, you're going to see me trying to flip through this stuff and eventually I'll be far more facile. Uh, this piece is uh, an oil on canvas. It's approximately 23 and a half inches by 36 and a quarter. And it is outside the lines, 1966, $8,200. I want to dive into this piece a little bit and see what is so, what is so, what connects to us? You know, what is so important about a piece like this? And I think it is important because it's, we all are different people. And we might have seen those two pieces, numbers one and two, and they may have been like, man, not my thing. But if you look here, if you call in, make sure you reference number three. We can always come back to it. But look at this piece. It's, like I said, very quiet, very linear, and it feels almost like a mental space, you, you, like a map that you're looking from above. And I think, okay, that's you know, the basic architecture of the piece. It feels a little bit natural, but um, quiet, much quieter. I have to take a breath enter a different part of my body. Because over here, it's very exciting. Right here, it's kind of calming. And I want to think, what is a piece like this doing in a painting like this? How is it in contrast to all this crazy business, right? Where is this hanging for and what? This, to me, it could be lots of things. It could be the movement of someone's head. It could be their hair. It could be uh, a dancer moving in the space, in this very large space with a window of light behind them. But this. I think is unarguably a place, a place of stillness, a place of quiet, a place where you can calm down and just rest and focus. Now, why would this be important to an artist like Adeo Pantaleoni? And I have to state something here. He signed his name Panta after many years of painting and always signing his name Pantaleoni, which you'll see down here, Adeo Pantaleoni, 1957. We'll get to that piece later. He all of a sudden started signing his name Panta. And I think, what was that about? Why does someone shorten their name? Uh, listening to the sound of it, I think Panta Leone. Panta is probably something to do with pants, but I don't know. But uh, Panta, Panta, what does it mean? It's like a punctuation. And I think later in life, he went from experiences that were internal to things that were very external and started to be much sharper, um, clearer in some ways. I think that they have an energy to them that's a unusually uh, energetic, but also clear to me. And you'll see that as we go around, I believe, that, that something in the early phases was 
was soft and internal, and later it became much sharper and external. And this is through the 60s in a transition period where you get these very quiet moments. Now, one of the moments that he went through art historically is the informal movement, and it's informale in Italian. Um, it's, it means that the work was touching a very raw part of us. It's not about depicting the illusion of reality, like I said about the hand, but it's an informal thing, a very, um, a very raw, visceral experience thing. And he went through a phase in his art world where he wasn't making paintings, drawings, and sculptures as we think of it like an image of something or what we call an artifact, a record of an experience, but he actually wanted to have the experiences themselves. And I'll try to pull it up. There was a, uh, an organization, he got involved in 1954. He showed at the Milan 10th Triennial at, with the Casa Sperimentale B24. That's the House of Experimentation B24. Casa Sperimentale B24 in 1954 at the Milan Triennial. Why was this important is this organization, this experience was all about recording what goes on inside us and having it live, having it, and this is what the informal means, is you're having it informally, you're having it immediately. You're not so much worried about making a picture of it, but you're recording that raw experience. So you look at something like this and it's hard at first. My, my dad would say this is abstraction and I would say it's reality because abstraction, uh, it's just as abstract to paint a couple brush marks and make something look like a hand, right? But to paint a couple brush strokes and make them look like brush strokes is more real. <laughs> it's realistic compared to making something look like something that it isn't. A couple brush strokes are not my hand. But this is. This is a couple brush strokes, and it is a couple brush strokes. And so that is real to me. And somehow it attaches to this notion of the experience and the informal, which is very concrete, you know, very solid. And I think for me, it's personally, it's very comforting. I want you to consider giving me a ring. My name is Thomas Boskett. The number is 855-983-5483 here at livearttv.com. That's Live Art TV, you're streaming. And you can see us live on Roku, Android, Apple, Amazon Fire Stick, and YouTube. Please feel free to give me a ring. Tell me what you think about this and think of the associations you might have with this image. Again, I was going off of this being an architecture. You might see something significantly different and I'd like to hear what you think. Um, the quietness again is contrasted against this crazy noise and then this kind of in-between place where something's hanging just off of a very wide open space and window. And it's interesting that this space over here, I've almost ignored completely because it's such a quiet place, it's almost a place of nothingness. I think of all the places in my life where I didn't pay attention, <laughs> didn't notice something, and then later maybe came to it, it became important to me. Some of us are quieter than others, and we find ourselves looking for a little bit of attention. <laughs> that could be that space right there where you come into attention. So if you can tell me what this means to you, I'd love to hear it. If not, maybe I'll come back to it later and we'll look at it. Now, we're going to zoom ahead. I'm going to have you see a whole bunch of stuff and make you a little crazy as we pass it. If you have any interest in any of these pieces, let me know. But what I want to do is try to get over here, Rich. If we can okay. get right down here, let's zoom around. I don't know if you're comfortable doing that, but <laughs> we'll take a curve. As, as Rich is doing that, I'm going to stay right here and let you know that we're looking at some pieces by uh, Ideo Pantaleoni. This is the painter, and these pieces are from all different points in his history, and we're coming all the way over to this piece right here in the corner, number 11. If you're calling us in, you wanna reference this point. And what this painting is called, The Garden of Fire. This is one of the most unusual paintings he's ever done. This piece is $8,200. It's an oil on canvas. It's 31 inches and a half by 40 inches wide. It is on canvas. It's on actually a beautiful piece of canvas that uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see the texture from, from uh, online, but it's, it's wonderfully rich canvas. It's actually got a, um, a toothy texture to it, which in the different weaves that they did over the years, um, artists would sometimes have very, very fine canvas, which was more for a portraiture or something where you wanted to see skin. But then in something like this, they wanted you to see the surface of the painting. And again, this is Edeo Pantaleoni, an Italian artist working in eras from about the 20s all the way up to the 80s. And this piece is extremely unusual to me because it's almost like everything was let go. Like he had the most freedom he ever felt in his life at this point. Everything exploded. There's a whole bunch of air. There's a whole bunch of space. Everything is starting to let go. Almost every point in his life you'll see that he held on to the geometry, 
the calligraphy of the strokes. Everything was very pulled in. And in this particular very unique piece, he let everything go, and it's free as heck. I mean, it's just flying. You see this green down here exploding up into the light. You see the blues, these unusual blues kind of darting through here that are lighting up and kind of connecting the, the different zones in the painting. And then you have this ultimate release into this light sky. And this is late in his life. This is his maturity. He's 82 years old. So if you see anything on these walls that you think are amazing, you have to think that this is the culmination of all of that. This is a man pulling together all that mattered to him into something that we get to visit. Um, and maybe, honestly, I don't even think I, I understand it when I first see something like this. I feel it. I understand it in my, my, my gut. But I don't necessarily understand it in my head yet. I understand to feel it and to look at this piece and see the life of it. And so for me, I'm standing here in front of it. I'm getting all this wave. And I think, what type of experiences, again, have I gone through? What things have I been excited about that remind me of something like this? And I, it's really extreme situations in my life, like graduation. When I graduated from college or when I see one of my nephews born, and for the first time I realize I'm an uncle and all these things are happening to me, this is the type of painting that's like a celebration of a great experience in our lives. And I want you to consider, what have you had that lights the fire in your belly? And give us a call at 855-983-5483. Tune in at livearttv.com and give us a ring. My name is Thomas Boskett. I want you to feel free to call me up. Let me know what you think. And what does this remind you of? What experiences have you had? What experiences have excited you like a fire that come up from underneath? This was Garden of Fire we're looking at. Look at this piece again. Take a quick glance, and we're going to back out a little bit and take a look at these two pieces together because this is, this is quite strange to go between these two and try to discuss it. This piece is called Defiance. This piece up here, this is $8,600. This is a period when pop art was in vogue. Andy Warhol was doing his work, and a lot of artists around the world were influenced by this. What interests me a bit is this piece was painted in 1960. That's extremely early for pop art. The pop arts that we think of usually are in the later 60s, and here you have something very early early on referencing that period, and it's an unusual piece. There's, there's a lot of obvious chunks of color and electric nature to it, not nearly as electric as what's below. It's contained. And what struck me about this piece, something about her eye. Something about her eye is very unusual, and maybe her hand here, but her eye has a, a more human, gentle, um, complex nature to it in contrast to the bold simplicity of these shapes and the electricity of these pieces here. The pieces around it, the color around it, is we could say primary. It's red, it's green, it's orange, it's blue, it's purple, it's yellow, it's actually every color of the rainbow, but it's to me there's something about it that's not primary. Primary to me is raw and there's although this is exciting and electric that way, it's not totally raw and you can see it in the eye. The eye is incredibly beautiful and subtle. Her eye almost looks like it's made of uh, turquoise and uh, like a lapis blue stone. Uh, you have these beautiful subtle browns in the oranges that you don't even see when you first look at this painting. It's all electric and kind of vibrant, but there's a beautiful quietness there that speaks to her yearning. Her voice is open. You can see her speaking to something. She's calling, and I think she's called, he named it defiance. I think, what is she defying? What is she against? It looks like the world is behind her. Her hair is flowing this way. The fabric is going this way. These lines are all going this way. Everything's kind of behind her, and she's all about the future. She's about defying our past and moving into the future and calling that forward. Um, that's where I believe you need the fire of these colors to move you, to get you there. But inside her, there isn't that defiance. There's a gentleness and a quietness and a resolve. And I think that that's what we can relate to as everyday people, I think, um, that we all have our fights. We have something we're fighting against. And I think that this is, this is interesting in his history for me because I, I spoke earlier about the concrete movement and the informal movement. The concrete movement was about geometric abstraction and lines and marks being very real for us. Um, this obviously has that. They're no longer abstract. I mean, you could argue that some of these shapes are abstract. They may indicate a breast or an arm or a hand or a body. But, but if you look at them by themselves, they're just simple shapes, you know, very, very abstract shapes. But there's something, in an abstract shape, there's something concrete and real. You can relate it to an experience you've had. There's nothing vague about it. Uh, that's more of a, a, a realistic painting style you'd find that in. 
But in this, you have this concrete kind of hard shape. Now, how does that relate to the informal? I wanted to get into this later, but maybe I'll do it now. The informal painting means the same thing, that something is very kind of raw and informal. But it led to a movement in the modern world called provisional painting. Provisional painting was something that you had to complete. The painting didn't just lay there for you and say, hey, I'm a bowl of fruit or I'm a picture of a girl. It said, hey, are you there? Are you listening? You know, do you have a, a response for me? And that's what, that's what informal painting led to, which we have today in painting. You have paintings that almost seem, uh, and we'll see some of them, I think, coming up, where it's very raw, and you think, well, why would somebody do that? It's so abstract. It's so left open. And it's because life is like that. Not a lot of life seals itself and says, hey, I'm a picture of a girl or a bowl of fruit. It says, I'm here. I'm an experience. I'm something you are having right now. And how do you understand it? How do you come to basically um, make it part of your life, like in a concrete way, where you understand it? Not concrete like art, but concrete like in our body. So this provisional painting, you'll start seeing, let's take, let's take this piece. Uh, provisional painting is something that's completed by you. I'm saying it stemmed out of this idea of the informal, informale in Italian, and this particular piece is called the nomad. This is a striking piece. It's one of our people here, one of her favorite pieces. I think she's, this piece is $8,200. It's called The Nomad. It was painted in 1973, and you can see down here his signature is on the piece. It's an oil on canvas. It's 19 and a half inches by 27 and a half inches. If you're in Europe, this is 50 by 70 centimeters. Uh, the piece is of a nomad, a drifting wanderer, standing somewhere in a landscape in a mountain. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, blue and sky and sort of mist and fog uh, taking you through this experience. And you think, you have to almost close your eyes. You have to imagine, what is it to be a nomad? You know, in our busy world, I would say that many people I know are nomads, but, and many of us at home may be a nomad. Ah, which reminds me, if you're at home, give me a call. Talk to me about this painting. If you feel that you're sitting there and you're an explorer all in your own world and an adventurer, a nomad wandering, give me a call at 855-983-5483. If you lose the number for any reason, all you have to remember is livearttv.com. Live Art TV is where you are, streaming live. My name is Thomas Boskett. Feel free to call in and talk about the nomad. The nomad is a person who is wandering, strong, obviously resolute in his position. I mean, he's mounted to the top of the canvas, to the bottom of the canvas. He's pretty. There's a feeling of him being connected to that landscape. If this is the landscape up here, he is heavily embedded in it and connected to it. Um, if that's his body, then he's still connected. Uh, strangely enough, some of the landscape feels like it comes through his body over here and brings, the, brings it to the forefront. That reminds me that, again, a nomad is probably, as much as they're alone, they are also connected to that land. And the land here is this blue sky, this mist, and then up into this kind of heavenly white just drifting along. Now, what's also interesting to me is that heavenly white comes down through the figure and sort of finds its way inside. What's that about? Like, when do you find that feeling of, of the ultimate coming down into you and settling around you and protecting you? I think almost of, uh, <clears throat> you could call it religion, but I think of it as spirit, something that's a spiritual feeling, something that connects you to the environment that you live in. And this is where, again, art is a record of an experience that an artist has had at some point in their lives. This is uh, Ideo Pantaleoni, the Italian artist, in 1973. And I think, but what experience have you had? You know, what are things that matter to you? And that's what is art to me. It isn't the object as much. The object is the record of what we had, and the object is what calls all this up in us. The object is what we can celebrate, put on our wall, and think about, hey, where was this moment in our lives? You know, what calls people to attention in essence? If I look at this piece, this is a strong piece. Although it's a small piece, um, it's not enormous. You can see the scale of it. It's a really strong piece. It's something that's a declarative piece. To me, this is a living room piece because it's something so strong. I, I mean, I could put it in an intimate place. It'd actually be a beautiful bedroom place, but it's a strong piece. It's not something I would tuck away. It's not something for a quiet room. It's something of a, of a, a stand on its own statement. Um, and it feels like a celebration to me, something that I can... Um, Oh, I'm thinking of the word. The word is, it's not even a word. It's in my body. And that's why I said close your eyes because I can feel this person being so solid from the inside out 
that there's no fear, that there's a safety even in all the fears that they might have, but they, they trust and they're moving forward. And I guess that's what I think of as the spirit in this, that it's so resolved to do something, to look at that heart. Yeah, look at that heart. Look at that place where he's so centered and he knows what's going on. He's strong. And when you back out and you see that whole painting again, you're going to see how that heart connects to the body and how it rides through to the landscape, takes you back through the landscape into the sky, and then up through the sky, you come all the way back down, and you find these rivulets, kind of like rivers, that go inside of us, connecting all that hope and that light into the being here. This is an art that is very concrete. Uh, and as I said earlier, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it a little bit more. This artist was interested in concrete art. Edeo Pantaleoni is the artist we're visiting today. And he was involved, he was actually one of the founders of the Movimento Arte Concreta, the Concrete Art Movement. Uh, this is abbreviated MAC, M-A-C, and he was one of the founders. This is a huge kind of moment in his life where he connected to art being an experience, something that you feel that you connect to. It's not just the artifacts that we make, but it's the experiences we have in our body. And how do we get that into an image was his whole mission. He was all about trying to find a way to clearly bring those experiences. And, it, and at a certain point in his life, he actually wasn't limited to painting, but he participated in events that got kind of crazy and synthesized all these things together, uh, leading to where we are now in the world, which is an art that is far more um, uh, provisional was what I was saying earlier is provisional dependent upon us to interact with it which I think is happening all over the place now we're going to keep moving along here I'd like to look at this next piece right here this is Edeo Pantaleoni in 1968 this piece is called Subtle Illusion it's an oil on canvas it's 23 and a half inches by 36 and a half inches it's $8,200 this is a very uncomplicated piece Somewhat minimal, I would say, uh, although it's got a lot of energy in here, you know? But it's, it's quiet on the sides. Well, I don't know if you'll be able to see the, Oh, you can see it, actually, on the camera pretty well. There's these beautiful, subtle color shifts. It goes from pink to kind of an orange-yellow to green to gray. There's a ton of color in here, and actually much more in the real painting you'll see uh, if you decide to purchase this piece, and I think you should. It's a beautiful piece. <laughs> it's a really beautiful, striking piece. Um, we're going to go into it a bit here because there's an unbelievable uh, story going on here of this being, this sort of strange being, and it's almost like a Chinese landscape, too. If you come up to the mountaintop and there's this crevice you tuck into, give me a call. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm at 855-983-5483. That's 855-983-5483. We are streaming live on Roku, Android, Apple, Amazon Fire Stick, and YouTube. We are LiveArtTV.com. I'm Thomas Boskett, your host, and I look forward to hearing from you. You can find us on LiveArtTV.com. Please drop in, say hi, and let me know what you think of this work. This piece, I, I could say complicated, but I, and I guess it is, but it's complex. It's, it's got a great density to it. I think a lot of people can relate to this, um, this, this being a part of our lives, the complexity of life and the craziness. Um, this is all internal to me. This, this painting is all about the inside of this being right here and what they're going through. There's an unusual moment right here in the painting where you go down through the painting sort of you know, uh, in depth and three-dimensional illusion, uh, which is rare for him. I think most of his paintings tend to be more on the surface because he wanted to remain that concrete connection to life. But here he dives in and takes you on this journey down through the painting. And while you pass through there, you see these blood red marks. They're kind of like cherry stains or something um, uh, like a, an intense love or a richness in life. I don't know if it's love, fruit, uh, but it's intense. And you can, you can feel it, but there's not too much of it. It's just enough that it pulls you in and holds you there, and you fall through it. You can feel it sort of writhing off to the side like this, like ribbons, and then it comes down and stands on the, on the bottom of the painting. There's a great deal of strength down here. This painting has a great triangle here that holds all of this, and then everything up here sort of flows and flies off of that and, and, and rides down, I guess, into the, to the wind and the space behind it. This is unusual that this side is so dense and heavy, but yet balances out beautifully with all the pieces that are going over here and all this activity. You almost need this anchor 
to hold it in. I think, what is that anchor? That's something we lean on. That's almost like a friend <laughs> that I find some security and some stability in. And I think, I'm, I mean, I'm not here maybe to be your friend, but I feel friendly enough to say, you know, feel free to call me. Go to livearttv.com, catch the number, uh, give us a ring. I'm at 855-983-5483. We're looking at the Italian artist Ideo Pantaleoni today, and I'd like you to take a look at him see what his works are about. We're going to go to a couple more works today and take a look around. But um, I'd like to dive into maybe uh, a moment that he had in his life. Uh, it's interesting. He, he said when he, ended, when he was ending his life, actually, it was, I have disembarked in a world full of color with a rational composition outline because I think for me, painting is above all color. So what does he mean here? He disembarked in a world full of color. That makes sense with a rational compositional outline. So if you look at the outline in this painting and you look at the uh, color that's in it, they're, they're almost like two different animals. The outline is all this energy and excitement. The color is inside it. The color is clearly sort of embedded in this image in a way that's different than the color being declarative. I don't know if we, if we can glance just a little bit over here, you'll see color that's very bold. It's red and whatnot, you see that. But if we come back here for a second, the color is much softer. The red that appears here is what we call filmic color. It's color that, um, it's like film. You can see through it, uh, but it also feels like film. It doesn't feel like something concrete. It feels like something that you feel as a sensation, you know, something inside you. And that's what he's doing here in this whole piece. He's looking at these edges uh, of, the, of the shape or whatever, the brush mark, but then the color is sort of infused into those shapes and edges. It's something where you, you, you kind of have a dichotomy between... Um, what it is physically, it's a thing, but then what it's full of and what it, what it feels. And so he's playing with the two worlds next to each other. So again, we're going to leave this piece for now. It's number 14. Feel free to give us a call. We can talk about any of the works we've discussed today if you come through halfway. And we're going to head on to the next piece. Um, I'm pretty excited about these two pieces. Uh, we're going to talk about these maybe a little bit together. We'll see. You ready over here? There we are. We're going to look at this one first, maybe, and then we'll come down. This is number 15. This work is called Passion. I don't think you have any question there. She seems pretty passionate about what she's doing. She's got nature all over her. We're going to talk about that in a second. This piece is $8,600. It's oil on canvas. It is 19 and a half by 27 and a half inches. Um, it's an oil on canvas, and it's unusual in that it's very flat. I wish you could see it. It's like a matte color. It's, 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 it's uh, almost like a suede uh, gentleness, which I think is appropriate for something that's called passion because you want to be able to feel it. You don't want it to be so slick that you fly by it. You want to be able to pause. Take a look again uh, and look at why he would do this. Why does he call this passion? Is it her passion? Is it our passion in looking at her? What do you think? I think it's both. I think we can be very absorbed in looking at her, very excited because she's a beautiful woman. Uh, she has her body open to us. She's pretty fearless. Um, her hair is coming down over herself, and it's kind of, um, it's obviously flowing and alive. Uh, the color is crazy. I mean, on this painting, it's just life, 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 life. He's got this blue-green here on her body that is surrounded by these orange lines and then touched up with this green at the end. Um, orange and green are secondary colors in the world of color theory. They are what we, uh, we call them, they're intermediates to the primaries. This is kind of crazy. But primaries are red, yellow, and blue. Red, yellow, and blue. And they kind of sit like the anchors or the, um, if you had a tri stool, you know, they hold the stool up. But in between them are the secondaries, these green, orange uh, colors that you see around here. They are a little bit more complex. Uh, they tend to vibrate off of each other here because of the, it's called simultaneous contrast, something where you have a vibration between the two hues. And it catches your eye and creates an enormous amount of life. I don't know online. I'm looking online. You don't see it probably as electric as I do in person. This is a beautiful pale turquoise, and it feels like a, a Caribbean water. It feels just like a Caribbean water. These feel like islands that are surrounded by the sun and everything's glowing and sort of vibrating all through here. When you come up through this painting, you'll see her face up here and you get into this wonderful glance. She's looking off at something or someone and giving them the hoo-hoo. Um, you know, take a look at me. She definitely wants you to notice her for a moment. And there's this beautiful... Uh, uh, alluring, you know, come hither, you know, hey. And I think we've all been there. 
I think we've all had those moments where you think like, hey, you know, I'm at the beach and I'm hoping somebody will notice me and give me some attention. And she's definitely turning it on for us. Uh, the painting is also turning it on because there's all this color and writhing message. Um, Adeo Pantaleoni, the artist here, his signature is in the bottom left corner, but he, he's obviously trying to get us to feel what we're looking at. He doesn't want us to be in our head nearly as much as he wants us on this painting and what's going on on it. Uh, you're coming down and looking at her whole figure and you'll notice here there's this natural leaf at her groin. It looks like a, a, a leaf kind of coming up, like she's life herself and it stems from life for everybody. I think everybody's life comes from having a mother and a, and a lover and um, that's how we find life. If you come up, you'll see that that image kind of springs into all these shapes and starts growing her body all the way up. You just keep coming up, coming up and you come around her, you see this flame of her hair comes in and you ride that wave up her arms, you come up into her arms and you just take off to the edge of the canvas, her arms go right off once you go all the way up. At the top of her crown, it's interesting, there's this golden yellow moment that comes around and I think that's obviously the sun hitting the top of her head. It's also hope and life, you know, when you're that passionate and you're young, um, we all have that memory. I think if we aren't young at the moment, we actually remember being young and this is a painting that, that basically celebrates that that joy of being, um, you know, just feeling lively, your beautiful best uh, when you were young. You know, and I, I definitely remember it. I'm already 50, but I'm still in here uh, for the big ride. Uh, give me a ring. We're at livearttv.com. The number is 855-983-5483. Uh, you are streaming live. You're watching us streaming live at Live Art TV. My name is Thomas Boskett, and I look forward to hearing from you. Please give me a ring. Let me know what you think. I, I know that sometimes it's difficult to put your words on the line, but it really makes art what it is to actually talk to each other and have a conversation. And anything that you think uh, is a valid thought, anything you feel is a valid feeling, I want to hear what that is. And I want you to share it with me. Uh, together, we can kind of draw it out, see how it relates to these images, how it relates to your life. You can tell me a story about some of the things that these remind you of. That would be lovely, um, just to hear what you're feeling, what you're thinking. I want to head down here, right over here to this piece, and focus in. Now, I might squat down here so I can talk to you. But this piece is from 1987, late in his life. Ideo Pantaleoni, the artist, did this pretty darn late. Um, which is always nice to see because uh, although we appreciate the raw young art that people do, which um, feels, what do you say, uh, when it's young, it's exciting. It feels, um, you know, you can see uh, like starting a journey in the woods, you know, you might be excited about what you're going to do or have there, but it's just the beginning. And so it is one thing, but it doesn't have the other. When you get to the end of someone's life, you see all that they were capable of doing, all that they were capable of thinking about, and it comes alive in this piece here. You say, what was he trying to pull together and make into this statement, which is the art? Uh, this piece is called Mosaic One. It's from 1987. It's an oil on canvas. It's $8,200, and it's approximately 19 and a half by 27 and a half. Uh, it's got a beautiful frame on it, actually, that, that is a soft white, kind of uh, a warm white that kind of connects all the pieces inside here to what's going on. Now, this piece, if you're European, is 50 by 70 centimeters, oil on canvas again. And this is a, a tough painting to unfold. I think anybody who's experienced a complexity in life will appreciate this painting because there's an enormous amount of complexity. Uh, this painting changes significantly when you're at a distance from it and when you're up close into it. When I'm up close, I see these wonderful sort of patterns of um, like stone or, or, or floating lily pads of kind of moving over this green area that's behind it. You know, and you can significantly, you can see the difference quite clearly on the television between these two worlds. When I'm this close to the painting, I'm standing in front of it, these two worlds are almost the same. They feel like they're connected like a tile work. And it's much flatter when you see it in life. When you see it from a couple feet away in life, like you're seeing it on the TV, it starts to create much more of a depth and a, and a, and a patterned writhing depth in the way, way, way distance, way far away are moments of light. You can catch them way in the distance, and occasionally in here you catch them little bits of, of things that light up and are like jewels buried deep down in the painting. This painter, Ideo Pantaleoni, was so far not very recognized in the United States. I think he's getting more attention now, and you're seeing him on your TV for the first time. Maybe you will recognize that he obviously has a beautiful uh, sense of of what it means to record our experiences, to connect them to what we're living in our lives. 
He's, for me, this piece um, is, is mental as well as it is physical. He's developing something that's called art, it's the art concrete, which is, uh, concrete art was basically a uh, geometric abstraction. Uh, he synthesized it with something that was more about the experience of art, which are what you call the plastic arts, something um, uh, far more experimental and uh, futuristic, which ultimately led to something called provisional painting. Uh, he's one of, to my mind, he's one of the founders of, of provisional painting via informal. The informal being more guttural, more brute, more, you'll know of artists, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Dubuffet. Look up Dubuffet, you'll see, D-U-B-U-F-F-E-T. Uh, a wonderful artist that had a brute quality to him. His style is definitely before that and feeding that, um, where he brought the very immediate to art. And I think that something like this, you feel that immediacy, and you'll definitely feel it when you see it live. Uh, you have to see this canvas uh, live. It's really wonderful. The patches of color are hard to explain, but they're, well, they're, they're solid. They're really solid and, and holding the ground, and then they're broken by these patches of other colors. The red and the green in here are breaking the blue, and they're creating this kind of fragmented, uh, crazy motion that's held together by this, these swaths of blue that are flat and sort of anchoring all of this in, and then he's built an unbelievable structure. This is, I mean, it's called Mosaic um, One. I'm sorry, Mosaic One, 1987. But it's 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 much more than a mosaic. A mosaic stays in pieces and tiles. This is starting to tile in three dimensions. Uh, if you think of looking on the internet, you know how you'll read linearly and go through what's happening uh, in a text, like you're reading a book. But when you go on the internet, you have highlighted words, and you can dive down in. This is doing that. It's what we call um, like a hyperdive. You can go across the image and you can go down through the image. And these blue patches, although they're anchoring the painting, there's these wonderful layers that go down through the painting and rise up on top of the painting. And I don't know if you can see it. These little yellow patches that are on top, there's yellow pieces in here occasionally that are actually sitting up on top. And again, this brings me back to why would an artist do something like this? What does this record in your life? Well, think about how you deal with space and time. Think about how you experience something, right? If you go to a, a room first, right? You enter the room, and then you start to experience uh, a cake. You think, okay, I'm at a birthday. Um, but then you see candles, and then you see smiles, and then you see family. And then you also have the experience of what's going on inside you, your heart, um, your, your thoughts, you know? And I think, how does somebody record all of that in an image? And I think this image, for me, He's talking about bringing together beautiful sort of natural uh, landscape-like water lily. Um, ah, I didn't even think at first that this is so much like a beautiful water lily painting by Monet. It's a, it's a 1984 version of that moment. Uh, but it's this wonderful electric sort of journey through time where you have all these different moments, you know, coming into a space, seeing the event that's happening, and then seeing the emotions and feelings that connect to that event as you move through it. And that's what this work is doing. It's a record, of almost a, a celebration. And you really would enjoy catching the moments in this. There's a beautiful moment right over here uh, of this red and this blue. And then it's enclosed in another blue and surrounded by green. I mean, you really, you have to see this painting live to really capture it. This painting, again, is Mosaic 1, 1980. It says 84 on the painting, yeah. And uh, it's 19 and a half by 27 and a half. It's $8,200. And if you're European, it's 50 by 70 centimeters. Uh, the piece can be seen at livearttv.com. It's number 16 here in the studio. If you want to call us, our number is 855-983-5483. We look forward to seeing or hearing from you sooner than later. We're going to move along here now to the next painting. I believe it's number 17 right here. Uh, let me see if I've got it. Yes, I do. Uh, this will be nice to see. This is a painting called Black Calligraphy on Red from 1966. It is $6,600. It's quite large. It's 30 and a half inches by 36 and a half, and it's a little bit larger because of the frame. Um, this is a pretty powerful piece. You're going to have some interesting questions around this. Again, we're at livearttv.com. Give us a ring. We're streaming live on Roku, Android, Apple, Amazon Fire Stick, and YouTube. Give us a ring. Livearttv.com. My name is Thomas Bosk. You can call me Tom. Don't call me Tommy. Um, this right here is going back through space, which is unusual for a piece like this because 
this piece is very bold and flat, and then you see this piece going back up in the distance like that, you think, what's going on there? It's like it's leaning in space, and yet it's, it's, it's got um, kind of a, a child right here, where you see the same shape as sort of this shape brought forward. You think, why does he do that? Why does he take me from here to here? How does he step out? That's what he does. There's all this activity in his life, and for a moment he steps out and he pauses. You know? And as we zoom out a little, you'll see also this wonderful rectangle down here that zooms around. What is that? Behind the step out and almost under this piece right here, kind of tucked under it, is this wonderful cloud of support. And this is probably one of the most unusual shapes that I've seen today, is this cloud. This cloud, generally you think of a cloud being up in the air, light and airy. This is a great deal of support and air underneath the painting holding it up. I think, why would he do that? Again, this is Adeo Pantaleoni, an Italian artist known for concrete art and, and the art informal. And here he puts this big patch. This big patch is like a, a life preserver. It's something that holds me up and breathes a little bit so that I can come up into all this experience. Look at this craziness. Look at this wild life that he's leading and all the activities that are happening. There looks like a little person sitting here, leaning their head over. They're eating something. There's another person in the room with them. There's a lot of activity. And then again, we talked about this earlier. He comes up to this beautiful, quiet nothingness. It's a black hole. It's a quiet sun. It's the dark night. You know, you just take a breath there and pause and think about that, what it means to have that peace. You know, just a second where you come on down and calm on down. <laughs> um, we're going to take a little break right now. And it'll be uh, just coming up. <laughs> We're going to take a break. It'll be a few seconds. And we'll come back for the second half of this show. If you've enjoyed his work, consider sticking around. Maybe grab a coffee, take a break, grab a sandwich. Um, but we're going to take a little time off. Let's wrap up this painting first. I'd like to have a few more minutes. Uh, we come up here and think about, think about what you're looking at as a whole for a moment. You've got this kind of couple of beings in this room. You've got this step out space, which is clearly, I would say, a mental space. It's not a physical space. It's something that you jump up into. You have this life preserver. What's going on in this room? I wish you'd call me at 855-983-5483. That's 855-983-5483. Give me a ring and tell me what you're experiencing. If you're there at home resting for a moment and thoughts are going through your head about what this work is about, this beautiful sun, kind of black sun, pause, this being sitting in this room, this moment that jumps into space and the survival, Think, what is this piece about? This piece called Black Calligraphy on Red, 1966, Oil on Canvas, is $6,600. I want to know what you see here. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know how you feel about this work. This is an unusual work, and I ask you to do me a favor. Go into this work for a minute mentally. Take a second to really embody the work. Forget about it being in your head for a second and just feel what it's like to sit in a room with another person, to have thoughts about uh, a place that is almost just, just in your mind. It's not even a physical place, but an experience you've had or a space that, you'd be, that you have been. Uh, think about the experiences that have that, that hope or that, that lift in them for you and say, what is it like to be supported by another person? Tell me a story about where you've been supported and what thoughts led to that uh, or were around that experience that, that held it all together. That's what this whole structure is. This whole structure is all about holding everything together, keeping it contained. And I think that that's what makes this image ultimately as comforting, is something that we don't even talk about, which is this background. This beautiful gray background um, is like a linen. Uh, you'd have to see the canvas live, but there's a beautiful, there's a color here that's uh, like a warm red gray, and then it turns to a cooler green gray out here, and it contains this whole image. It's this is a hard thing about painting for a lot of people is that they think that the, the quiet places are the nothingness. But I think any person who's quiet knows that the, the quietness is not the nothingness. It's the person who can contain things, who is safer uh, to sit back, look at things, understand them from a distance, and contextualize them for others potentially. So I think that that's what this space does is, is it holds this whole painting together beautifully um, and allows all this activity, energy, action, life, and even this ultimate quiet to all hold together as one thing. Now, I'd like to, I think I want to move right along to one more piece over here. 
I think so. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, I've got my funny hand. Let me get my other hand. And all right. So we're going to take a few more minutes to look at this piece. This is just visualized, 1968. And I've been dying to talk about this piece all day. This piece is by Ideo Pantaleone, the artist we're discussing today, Italian in formal art, also studied extensively the concrete art movement, uh, the movimento. Arte Concreta, uh, his, this painting is $8,200. It's 19 and a half inches by 26 and a half inches. It's 50 by 60 centimeters, if you're visiting us from a European audience. It's number 18 if you call in. And I want you to look at this piece for a moment. <clears throat> and this piece is very, um, it's, it's, it's very much so, to me, a derivative of his concrete movement because it's a moment in your life. It's one moment. It's one very, very common moment to us, but special moment. When you sit down with your family and you sit and eat dinner, um, there's always a table of food set up for you. There's something there for you that is about communing, about getting together. And most of his artwork, I would say, I would argue, is about uh, some form of getting together with the experiences, being a human. Um, he's, he's taking us into life and recording it for us, uh, pulling it together. And I think that that was significant to him his entire life, and I think it's significant to most of us to have a record of that is a wonderful thing, something you can hold and uh, share with others and also have as a, as a touchstone to communicate over. This piece, I would say, is more like a, a, a small still life where you have this experience of, call it vegetables, fruits, whatever you want. I think it's fruit in my mind. Uh, there's these wonderful plums and, and, and peaches, uh, um, red plums and blue plums, actually. Uh, but if you look at this, I wonder, what is this in this still life? What it, it looks like someone's head, looks like some being is sort of in the space. So it's as if I'm looking over somebody to share the meal with them, to get involved in this dinner. And so it pulls me in. It's unusual because it doesn't contain itself. You can see that it's open on the bottom. It doesn't quite set down. So he keeps the experience alive for us. He keeps the experience up in the air a little bit, so to speak. Um, it's in our head. Uh, it's in our physical space, though. It's very present for us. And so I, I, I find that unusual in most of his work where he grounded things quite often. Uh, although they move a great deal, they're pretty grounded, and this piece tends to float a lot. Here's the ground in this piece, but it's a very small part of the painting. And then an interesting piece in this painting also is this green. And I would, I would love it if you called in, livearttv.com, and let me know what you think. Um, for me, this piece... This piece right here sits back quite a ways and tends to anchor the piece significantly. Uh, why is an anchor important to me? Uh, I like to feel like I'm standing on my feet, even though something might be exciting and energetic, as this is when it rides around and starts a meal with the family. I also want to have that feeling of stability, something that I'm sure of, something that I can rest on. And I think that's what he's giving us here. Ideo Pantaleoni is giving us something to hold on to, something secure. I... Hope to hear from you sooner than later. My name is Thomas Foskett. I'm at livearttv.com. I'd like you to call us. Uh, drop us a line. Our number is 855-983-5483. We look forward to hearing from you. If you feel so inclined, you can say anything you'd like to say. I'd like to hear from you. Um, it's either your thoughts, your feelings, uh, specific moments you remember that these paintings remind you of. And you can go through any of the paintings that we've seen. I don't know if you we're here early in the show, but you can always review the show at any point and go through it, or you can go online to livearttv.com and see the entire collection. We've reviewed maybe 10 works today. You can see more than 55, I think, online and see the entire collection. It's an impressive collection. It's a beautiful collection of art. Uh, he has a great range from his 20, the 1920s all the way up into the 1980s. Uh, he started so young. He was uh, born in 1904, and by the time he was in 1923, he was 19 years old. He was, had already studied in three schools of art in Italy. He had been in triennials in Milan. He was in the center of the art world for many years. He's very well known in Europe, and he's only getting known here in America and outside of European uh, art world. Only recently, we look forward to your comments, your feedback, and seeing you here. I think we'll have a little bit more time today. If you have any questions for me, I'll address them. If not, I'm going to talk about him as an artist overall. Uh, I'd love you to call me. Uh, <laughs> he's, he, uh, the one thing that struck me, I think, about him is how he informed the modern moment we're in, which is called provisional painting. Provisional painting had a lot to do with the viewer completing the work, and that's what he was known for. And so I want you to think about what it means to have a work of art in your home that connects you to the experiences you have in life 
and how alive that piece has to be. And I think that's what he's captured in his work is the life that we lead. Uh, I need to have more records I know around me, and I don't know why, but to remind me, um, to, to basically to bring to my mind again, to remind me of what I had once, I can have again, uh, I can learn from it, uh, we can share it with other people. It's hard to share your experiences when you don't have a record of them. Uh, not many of us are artists, so we might need somebody to actually capture that moment, and then we can share it with other people and give them a sense of what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what we're experiencing. Uh, he did that beautifully, and so I think you see that in most of these pieces. Uh, these were wrapping it up by taking a view around the room, and we'll see the history of the works that we were looking at all the way back to his beginning. And you take us around to his future. So we see here some of the earlier works. We're taking a little view and we'll say, we hope you've enjoyed today looking at some of the works of Adeo Pantaleoni. Thank you so much for dropping in. If you have any questions, please go to Live Art TV, find us. You can call our, 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 basically our employees here to help you, guide you through a sale. If you have any questions on something, we'd love to hear from you. I will gladly talk to you. Just let me know what you need to speak about or are interested in, and we'll share it together. Thank you so much.